We are live. Welcome to Willow 2022 series, episode three thoughts. This episode is called The Battle of Slaughtered Lamb. Now, spoilers for the the movie and these three episodes. And yeah, well, you know, yet again, I continue to love every episode of the show so far. Now, yeah, so I just gotta get this out of the way to start with. A number of conservative critics, you know, criticize progressive media saying, you know, these pieces of media will make minority characters, especially women, look good by making white men look bad. That does happen in some progressive movies, true, but it also happens in conservative movies, with the main difference being that it's the white men getting to look good while other white men and sometimes minorities looking bad there's a lot to love about the first predator and the first die hard movie but both of them make fools out of you know male characters that that are not meant to look good in the case of predator it's i want to say they're they just refer to them as the rebels or something like that but yeah you know the the people they that that Dutch and his team, you know, they take out one of these camps, and it's like, how are the how are the rebels they're fighting this bad at aiming and this bad at like guard posts and such? And in the case of Die Hard, it's basically every single person with any kind of authority other than John, and I'm afraid I forget, but the the black cop that he befriends, even other like cops, you know. Cops, FBI, they're completely incompetent. And that really just scratches the surface of American movies where a lot of characters are just incompetent to make the hero look good. All I'm saying is, if it's wrong to do in progressive movies, logically you would think that it's wrong to do in conservative movies. Personally, I think it's just media shorthand. I don't think it's wrong in any of these movies or shows, with the one exception being when it can make some people hate the people being made to look bad, which is often the case when it's minorities being made to look bad, especially when white men are the ones made to look good, because many people think that white men are the only ones who can get things done right. And, you know, that was, yeah, that the, 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 that was something the first two episodes were, were criticized for. And many, many other pieces of progressive media. Now, I've mentioned that largely Sean Chandler Chalk's movies is a good critic, who I sometimes disagree with. So, yeah, I, once again, I want to present a counter-argument. You know, he says in his spoiler-free review that Kit talking down to people, criticizing, for example, kitchen staff, makes her less likable. I completely understand where he's coming from, but I agree, I, I disagree simply because no one seems to have any problem with criticizing her, even to her face, and so far she never responds to things like that by saying, how dare you? I'm the princess. It's true that even in her introductory scene, she's very arrogant to Jade, but Jade gives as good as she gets. Jade never appears to be upset about that. And it's not as though nothing Kit says or does upsets Jade. Uh, you know, but but yeah, basically, I don't, I don't think he used this term because a lot of people who don't identify as progressive are really uncomfortable with it, but basically what he describes is she doesn't check her privilege. And... Basically, you know, the, the, I, the moment that she actually says to someone, you have to do this because I'm the princess, I then I agree. But so far that has not happened. And, you know, he watched, I think he said he watched six episodes. So, I don't know, maybe that is coming up. But, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, just a couple of things, you know. So, yeah, from... A good critic who sometimes gets things wrong to some really baffling I don't even know how these these are these are a couple of quotes from user reviews that I just I don't even I I'm baffled that these are these are just I don't I don't understand why I even have to explain this but apparently some people need this explained some people you know some user review said why did Kit and Jade kiss in episode one they kiss right before Kit is leaving. They're not sure when they're going to see each other, or even if they love each other, of course they're going to kiss in that situation. Like, I would 
honestly be kind of disturbed if you say that in that situation you would not kiss the person you love like that's just and you know romantically and yeah some some people were really unhappy that willow was only in a little of episode one it was build up and as of episode two he's part of the ensemble and in fact episode two spends a lot of time a, a lot of screen time on him and elora so it's just yeah i <sighs> I would agree if he only showed up at the end of the show, but he shows up at the end of episode one of eight. There's plenty of time for him to get screen time. Like, yeah, just, I, moving on. Now, right, and, and a number of people, you know, basically, you know, express that they don't think that it's, they don't see any reason for LGBTQ characters and relationships depicted in a positive light in media. And I say the reason we need that is not only because they are a group disproportionately targeted for hate crimes, including murder, but also because when that happens, conservative media personalities, I refuse to refer to them as journalists, victim blame. And we just saw them giddy that a recent shooter identifying at a recent shooter identifying as non-binary as if that somehow makes it right to hate LGBTQ people the fact that there are some minor you know there is there is some small percentage of these people who are hateful and violent like it's just I it's 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 beyond disgusting honestly um yeah I'll be I'll be linking to at least one video in the in the description box that yeah other others have said it with yeah so i'm just yeah i'm going to focus on this episode so yeah we we open with yet another i i guess they are just going to do this every single episode all three episodes so far at least have opened with someone retelling something that happened of the you know a long time ago. Well, I guess in the in the case of episode two, it wasn't necessarily retelling. I f actually, I forget if it was retelling, but but yeah, you know, in in all three cases, we open in the past and then we go to the present of the show. And uh, you know, Kit basically, you know, she's like, I I quite liked her her nicknames this episode. She was like a. A uh, little bit like Sawyer, you know, very, very cutting nicknames. Uh, you know, uh, Borman is, is trying to tell the story, and she's like, wow, I see why they call you Borman. And I've seen some, you know, some, some user reviews really criticize this aspect, that they talk, th some of the, sometimes the characters will talk the way they do you know, t today, like modern speak. And I think this particular instance really underlines something that, you know, the the the, the reviewers, the, the people for whom reviewing movies and shows is an actual job, they compared it tonally to Princess Bride, that's what it's called, and I feel like that was a very strong example of that, uh, you know, like straight up, he's he's going off on this thing, and the person being told the story is like, okay, um, what what does this have to do with that, you know? So yeah, and you know, maybe the I don't think they had something quite like that in the first two episodes. Maybe an argument could be made that something like that should have happened earlier to really clue people in. But then, you know, we're less than... Let's see, if there's eight episodes, three out of eight is a third of the way through. So it's... Yeah, it's it's fine. And, you know, when, when she realizes that Elora is missing, and she still doesn't believe that it's really Elora Dan, and she calls her... She calls out, Miss Muffin... Because that was the thing, you know, her muffins are, you know, am amazing. And, and she's like, I can't believe that this freaking kitchen person, you know, I get, you know, the, the, you know that if Dove heard her, 
she would, you know, she would say something mocking right back. And, yeah, you know, she really, Kit realizes she is a Loradan, and she, you know, we, we see just how big it grew, the, the thing that we saw start to grow at the end of episode two. And I love that Kit is, like, irritated about that. She's not like, we're saved. She's like, ugh, now I have to respect her. And, yeah, I, I like the various fights. I think maybe an argument could be made that there did not need to be. Let's see. So, fairly early in the episode, we have a fight between Ballantyne and some of the, the good guys. And, let's see, that ends with... Yeah, Graydon is not able to free Elora in time. Then a little later, it's Hubert versus Ballantyne. And Hubert seem, you know, thinks sh she's won, but then is stabbed to death. And then, near the end of the episode, we have the, the final climactic battle between all, yeah, by, you know, all the good guys that are still alive and, and on the quest, and the, the possessed ones, and then it ends with Willow using magic to basically insta-kill the, the, well, you know, be, uh, take out the possessed, possession part, which it's interesting that Ballantyne, even though he was the first to be possessed, is also the only one who, after that, can still deliver, you know, some, some inspiring, important words to Jade, which I guess, you know, okay, so even after he's been possessed, he still has plot armor? That's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just... That's not a huge negative about this show. I'm just saying, boy, do our Western media have a lot of plot armor in a lot of these stories. Anyway... I just feel like the others should have lived longer than than he, anyway yeah but but yeah you know maybe an argument could be made that it wasn't necessary to have that many battles i do think that the two axemen hubert and anne really provide like we we see how regular people feel about this you know now that the the although i guess yeah, yeah, the, the Nelwyn were not convinced that this was Elora Dannon, or at least a bunch of them weren't. The two Axe women, yeah, they're, they're convinced, and they're really, really, they're hugely relieved. And we see, you know, they, at the start, they're, they're fairly, like, they're already pretty casual. They're, they're not, like, running scared, usually, you know, so, but even they know that things can get better, so, yeah, I, I think that was, that was good. And let's see. Yeah, yeah, so the first battle has Graydon frustrated that he, you know, he, like he says, he, he always freezes up. And, you know, then at the end it helps, you know, basically we haven't really seen, you know, it's, it's too bad that the trailer is kind of spoiled that Willow was, you know, has some amazing magic now, you know, which I love his character in the movie, but he doesn't quite have, you know, yeah. And the, the, let's see, um, yeah, you know, so the, the climax ends with him showing that he does have magic, which a little earlier, you know, let's see, it was Jade and... Actually, I forget who the other one was. Maybe Borman? Yeah. Now, the... Yeah, ultimately, I think that it... You know... I, I did think that there was a reason for there to be three battles instead of just one. Considering that so much... You know, it's... They're always... It's always good guys fighting Ballantyne and or the other possessed over... Elora Dan, and so it is essentially, it's, it's, you know, it's three fights of the same, even though one of them has Hubert and none of the other good guys, and, but, but yeah, anyway, and, yeah, so, you know, they, I, I do also like, you know, 
Graydon runs up to to help Elora, and she's like, "What are you, what are you doing?" or something like that. And he's like, "I'm I'm freeing you," and she literally says, "Was there no one else available?" <laughs> That is, like, even, even, like, even in this situation where you think, oh, wow, you know, he's, he's saving her life. This is, you know, no, even then she's like, you know, you're not very impressive, right? Just, yeah. And to be fair, you know, last, right before she got knocked out, he was, like, laughing and she thought he was laughing at her when really... You know, he wasn't laughing at her feeling like she's nothing special. And, you know, and yes, after that, he said something really encouraging. But, you know, she got knocked out. Maybe she forgot the encouraging part. And just, no, I, I really love it. It's, and it's, 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 it's also a trope, you know, but it's, it's a, it's a fun trope that even when you're being rescued, you know, it's like, you're, you're still going to bust their chops. And, yeah, you know, Jade saved Kit during the fight, and, you know, Jade tells Kit that she let Kit win when they, when they spar. And that is something that, it's honestly, it takes something like this to, to have me really empathizing with someone who has a lot of privilege, but... Yeah, you know, some privileged people, like, they're surrounded by yes-men, and that's part of why they don't do more with their power and privilege to help other people. It's because they're constantly being told that they're amazing, they're the best they am, you know. And, yeah, the, the... I don't think they say as much, but I guess the idea is that Sorsha was scared that Kit, if Jade wasn't letting her win, would, that, that Kit would run out and fight something actually dangerous to prove herself. And that is, like, sometimes, you know, if, if you think that you're amazing and, and people are telling you you have to tone it down, you might become even more insistent and especially you know she is i don't I, I, she is supposed to be a teenager isn't she uh, so so yeah the the you know i'm rewatching hawkeye and there's that great line rich people think that they're in, invincible and young people think that they're invincible you have always been both and yeah the the it it really is that the she she just can't and and yeah you know now Jade kind of had to tell her now let's see and yeah I I quite like the axe women I like that they're like and never does say anything does she <laughs> that's let let's see was. Was there a thing where Hubert was, like, stopping her from saying, or was it just that she doesn't talk? Anyway, but yeah. You know, I, I really love how Hubert is eloquent and very, like, chatty to, to yeah, just she... And, and she's, like, she's using words that Dove doesn't recognize and, and all this. Just, she's... She's a real, she's a happy camper, and, and just, yeah. Let's see, and, you know, finally Dove manages to, to get, to make herself understood. And it's also, you know, that's also a trope. And, and I suppose I should also say some of this is maybe especially specific to stuff that is okay for children to watch also. So, you know, bus busting someone's chops while they're rescuing you, you know, children's entertainment kind of thing and being in danger and someone might be able to help you but they just will not believe that you're in danger that's also a bit of a trip from there i quite like the the bit about how you know B borman is like no we we should take that path okay i i acknowledge that it is 
poorly named. It's really not as scary as it sounds, you know. And and the other one was like the the um yeah the the other path sounds much more pleasant. And Borman is like it also takes much longer, you know. And and Kit breaks it down into these one of them was called like valley of the boob or whatever and let's see. yeah and and once dove manages to explain herself to the to the axe women they are determined to to help her and i also really like that you know they really they just want to be sure in when she tells them she is elora dan and not just named you know, hopefully for the, the no, she she is Elora Dan, and they see the mark, and they actually react. You know, th this is really the the and and she now ex oh actually she doesn't know that her thing worked, does she? Did she did she just barely no? I think she got knocked out before. Ah, anyway, oh that's I guess. Because of Graydon's pep talk. I hope he finds out about that so he doesn't feel so bad. But, but yeah, you know, the, the, um, let's see, uh, what was the thing? Y yeah, once they realize, you know, they're, they're really, really, they're, they're, they're amazed, you know, and, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously in real life, the, the, you know this whole prophecy, prophecy thing isn't but yeah you know it's a fantasy universe i would say in real life the the equivalent to that since this is in part something that children can watch and you know hopefully be inspired by that was clearly part of the movie's point as well yeah you know if you go out there and you really do something to change things for the better you know, yeah, it, the, the, um, yeah, you can, you can inspire people, because at first, they're just like, oh, calm down, little lady, you, you know, you, you really need to, they, they think that, that she's just confused, or, or something, and once they realize that she's going to change the world for the better, you know, they're, they're right behind her, and fighting alongside her, and that's, that's something that's really great to, to convince, you know, children and teenagers of today, because that is extremely important. There's a lot of problems to be solved, and it's pretty clear that it's not, like, the people who already have power are doing extremely little, if anything. So it is up to future generations. And yes, I know, I'm too young to be saying stuff like that. Uh, I, I kind of like that Hubert keeps, like, she can't quite stop talking about how attractive Elora is, which I guess is also maybe a tiny bit creepy if Elora is supposed to still be a teenager, but yeah, you know, it's I, I it's more like a kind of cringe, like, ah, oh, please stop saying that kind of thing more than it, I, I don't it doesn't ring uh, it doesn't come off as creepy to me, but yeah, you know at, at first, you know, Elora's when, when Elora says there are men coming to get me, and and Hubert is like, I'm quite sure there are, considering you know what you look like, kind of thing. And then later, you know, it's I, f I forget exactly what, but she says something like, your your complexion or you know something, just yeah. And I do quite like Hubert did actually manage, like she nailed Valentine pretty good. Like I want to say. In, she, she buried her axe in his back and you know unfortunately she was not complete she didn't realize that he could survive that because of the possession and I like you know when when um, when kit is like telling you know telling Borman has anything you've told me been true I resent that at least a third of what I've told you has been true you know, just yeah and I, I really like the, you know, she, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, she, she's like, I'm not going down there. Of course you're not. You, you have to, you know, lift me back up after, you know, you, you lower me and then you lift me back up. 
Be careful of the were rats. Were rats? <laughs> Just yeah. And I mean, I I I feel like it's not the once we see the were rats, you know, with their with their two heads and their bright glowing red eyes that really pierce through even pitch black like there's got to be maybe there's got to be dozens maybe a hundred after them as they run out of the the cave and then like yeah they're they're creepy not quite two headed dragon creepy but we are getting there you know that's it's quite nice and yeah it's it's different like the the yeah and and I like that at one point kit is like if I get bitten, the first flesh I'm feeding on is yours. <laughs> and I gotta say, the the possessed makeup is really great. Like the the these like really nasty looking boils and and just yeah, really really yeah. And let's see, yeah, and and Elora touches one. Is that? Yeah, yeah, that's why she, she, you know, uses the, the, tries using the spell again. It's, it's yeah, you know, it's still the only spell she knows. So, you know, she didn't, look, she didn't mean to turn the mean girl in class into, crap, was it a pumpkin? Ah, it's been so many years since I watched that. But it was the only thing she knew how to do, you know. Cantaloupe. It was a cantaloupe, wasn't it? Anyway. Let's see, and let's, um, yeah, and, you know, Laura Dannon still has guts, even this is, you know, I decline, <laughs> and, you know, Ballantine is like, what are you gonna do, kind of thing, you know, and, and she, yeah, she does the spell again because it's the only thing she. You know, she's she's basically just hoping that they'll be so scared that she can like get away or something, you know. And I like that for like a fraction of a set, you know. What I, I forget which what one of the possessed is like hit with something in the in the head. Like I think it was one of the one of the two dwarves maybe that threw a rock or something. Oh wait, was it maybe Graydon who threw a rock? And that's why he's the one giving up. Yeah. But, you know, for a second, it's like, wait, I, I thought the I thought that spell was just to make stuff grow. I didn't think it would actually attack one of the, you know. And, and <laughs> Graydon says, let go of her, you silly ninnies. So apparently he's been studying insults for, for medieval times at the same school that... Those French, you know, guys in, in that, uh, uh, crap, what's it called again? The, the, um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And, yeah, we get another fight of the good guys versus the possessed. And, you know, we see Borman find the, the thing that he described that, what was it, it like, imbues it that's the thing that makes the armor completely in, invulnerable and he claims to kit that he found nothing so obviously i we're, we're basically left with two options maybe he doesn't want to get her hopes up before he has the full armor or maybe he wants it for himself and maybe it, I mean, it's possible that, that there was nothing, like, um, what's his, uh, Matt Mardigan, that, that Matt Mardigan was never a part of this, you know, because apparently, basically, the, we only have Borman's word for that, you know, and he admitted that two-thirds of what he said might not be true, so, yeah, um... Considering Val Kilmer, um, you know the the what he's he's going through these days, I you know we're probably not gonna get a cameo by him like actually. I don't know. I I. It feels like it almost would be disrespectful. 
respectful to like have someone else play that role maybe by the end of the 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 season or series if it gets to be ah uh, we we don't know for sure if there will be more than one season but yeah um maybe they'll reach like his grave or something and kit will be able to you know a base be better deal with her yeah and i like that borman points out you know maybe you're taking your frustration at mad mardigan out on you know dove because she knows that mad mardigan went to great lengths for elora dannon when elora was a baby and he wasn't there for kit so Let's see, and yeah, and, and Kit saves Jade, which is a, a good moment, and I really like the, again, it's, it's a trope, and it's, but yeah, yet another trope we have, you know, Willow is like, we can't win this fight. I have, I, I forget what it was he said, but he has, you know, something in the wagon and Graydon is like, are you crazy? That's extremely dangerous. Look, we just, we get to the wagon, we get that, that can stop the, the possessed, you know, and they, they're about to go to the wagon and then lightning strikes blowing up the wagon and blowing up, you know, that's why it was dangerous. It was apparently extremely, like, it, it, yeah, it was it was some kind of explosive un under those circumstances at least. So yeah, and then Willow's like, "Okay, uh, keep fighting." <laughs> yeah, I wish the first thing it reminded me of wasn't The Force Awakens, but here we are. Let's see, and yeah, Silas dies, and. That was, you know, it, it was very emotional, uh, I felt. The, the um, you know, first Silas dies, and then Valentine, who, you know, Jade earlier on said, you know, let me help you. It's, you know, and Graydon explained to her, you know, bad magic eats away at you until there's nothing left of the, the person that, yeah. To which Willow humorously, is, wait, are you High Aldwin? No, wait, I'm High Aldwin. And yeah, you know it's it's a it's a trope that you know uh, fight you know of a scene during it's you know it's dark and it's raining and such you know so it's it's really sad and it's really dangerous but it works. And Graydon is also possessed, which I mean, did everybody else that balance? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, Ballantyne can, can infect. He also infected the other members of his... Yeah, yeah. So, the, the, um, that brings us to the end. And, and we, you know, get yet another anachronistic music cue. And, you know, some people seem to really hate these. I, you know, a friend of mine, you know, has also watched, you know, yesterday I talked to him about the, the first two episodes, and there were things that he really liked, there were things that he was just okay with. He explained really well why he and I are not bothered by the anachronistic pop, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, needle drops. Because they fit, you know, they, they not... They don't fit the time period, no, but they fit the situation that they're, you know, what was it often never, never land, I think it was in, in this one, you know, so as we see, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I already, nor, nor are, are dark or something, but, you know, it's basically Mordor, and yeah, I, 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 if, if I felt the anachronistic elements of the show took away from it, then I agree it would be bad. But for me, it doesn't have that effect. And I, you know, I'm not saying, obviously, if that is what is happening for you, that is frustrating. I get that. I think that's everything. Um, let's see. The... 
as of yet, uh, Jesse Gender has not put up a video talking about this episode. I don't know, maybe it is possible that she won't, but, you know, yeah. If she does, make sure you watch that. If she doesn't, watch something else of hers. Uh, I, I've liked uh, all of the content that she has put up, so... Yeah, um, really, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm glad that it was only one episode that Elora was captive, and now she's back with the rest of the group. And, yeah, I'm, yeah, now that, now that the Ballantine and his two possessed men are gone, but they're also, yeah, because the, the, um, I'm gonna get up, go ahead and call them the Fellowship, since... That's the word Kit used. The The Fellowship themselves are headed into this really dark and evil place, so that's where they're going to encounter something else evil. So, yeah, yeah, it's good that they got Ballantyne and the other two possessed out of the way, and we did get this emotional scene where he tells Jade, you know, I'm, I'm really, really proud of you and this whole thing. So, yeah, um... I'm still, the, the you know, there, there are a couple of mysteries that I'm excited to see how they bear out, and I continue to care about all the characters, I continue to like the action, I do, uh, no, wait, I'm gonna hold off on that until I've seen more episodes, that is everything, so... I intend to record a couple more videos this week, so I hope you will join me for them, and if not, I hope to catch you next week for episode 4 of Willow. So, catch you at some point for sure.